I'll start this one showing you how some of the note-taking apps are protecting our data. Then I'll tell you which one would be a good option if you are a security freak, <laughs> if you want <laughs> the maximum protection. And then I'll move to uh, a way I'll show you uh, how to use Evernote notes in a way that you can better protect the information in the notes. I'm not a security specialist. What we'll be doing here together today is reading through uh, the official documentation on these apps' websites. Don't worry, I'm not gonna <laughs> read everything. We'll go to, to the specific points. And if you are uh, a security specialist, please help us leaving comments in the description below. Let's start with OneDrive. All the companies will have a, a page like this that you can read through, but what you're looking for is this part here, uh, encryption, how the data in your app is encrypted. And in the case of OneDrive, there are two types of encryption here. One is protected in transit, and the other one is protected at rest, okay? In transit means that the data leaving your computer and going to Microsoft's uh, servers and vice versa is protected, is encrypted, and they usually explain which type of encryption they are using, okay? Then we have protected at rest, meaning that the data inside the server is also protected. If we move down here, there is again uh, an explanation on how this data is protected. In both cases, the goal is to protect your data from people, uh, hackers, trying to gain access to that in transit when you are sending and receiving data and also when it is inside the server at rest. Okay, now, in transit, and at rest means that someone has the keys to this data. And all these websites, uh, the security page will explain who and how this data can be accessed. So one thing that you have to do is read through because my goal today is not to compare anything here. I just want to show you how all this works and you see that there is a common theme here among all these companies. Okay, let's move to the next one. Here is the Notion security practices. And if we scroll down, we'll find here the same two encryptions. Encryptions at rest and encryption in transit. And they also explain what is the type of encryption they are using. Again, I'm not a specialist. I have no idea what is better than what. So if you are a specialist, please help us in the comments below. And again, there is also here explanation about physical uh, security access to the information stored in the servers. What about Dropbox? Okay, Dropbox files at rest are encrypted and then here's the technical specification of how they are encrypted. Uh, the next item is Dropbox uses again some technical words here to protect data in transit between Dropbox apps and our servers. So similar to what we just saw uh, with uh, Microsoft and Notion. What about Google Drive, all files uploaded to Drive or created in docs, sheets, slides are encrypted in transit and at rest using this, <laughs> whatever this is here. Again, in transit and at rest. This other sentence here is explaining that you can locally encrypt files on your computer and add those files encrypted to uh, Google Drive and synchronize the, that encrypted package. And this is something that you can do 
with almost any service. You, you can do the same if you are using uh, OneDrive, for example, to synchronize your data or Dropbox. You can always have an uh, encrypted package that you can put inside uh, a folder and synchronize that. And of course, that creates some limitations because if you are encrypting something and adding that to Drive or OneDrive or Google Drive or Dropbox, that thing that you encrypted will not be accessed from, let's say, uh, Google Docs or Google Sheets or Excel or Word or whatever Dropbox uses to open the files. So it's not going to be possible. So there, it comes with limitations. Uh, so let's take a look at Google Cloud, which is the uh, cloud service that, for example, Evernote uses to store our data. Again, we have here default encryption at rest and a lot of technical explanation here. And there is also encryption and transit. And again, a lot of technical explanation. So this is, uh, Evernote is still using uh, Google Cloud as its uh, server. So our data uh, basically follow this uh guidelines, rules, I don't know. <laughs> but we'll soon take a look at Evernote's specific uh, security page and also how you can encrypt something in an Evernote node that wouldn't be visible on the server side. First, let's take a look at Obsidian. There is something different here. There is this new uh, uh, definition here end-to-end -end encryption. And by the way, you'll find the links to all these pages uh, in the description below. And I'm not going to go through all the apps, but it's pretty easy to find these pages. I'll just type the name of the service and the name of the app and uh, cryptography, uh, encryption, security, safety, and you end up in one of these pages, OK? What this means is that your vault which is how Obsidian calls the, the space where the our data is in our computers, your vault is encrypted on your computer, and that big package is synchronized with the server and stays encrypted there with your keys. Obsidian doesn't know how to open that package. This is what is what end-to-end -end encryption means. Only you can, and, and whoever has the password can open that file. And below here, there's another information, managed encryption. Obsidian will allow you to keep the key with you, the key to open the vault with you, which is your password. And it will, it will also provide you the service to manage it, but even if you are using Obsidian to manage your password, that password will also be encrypted. So Obsidian will not see it. Okay, there are problems here, of course, if you are doing this. The first one is if you lose that password, you're done. There is no way to access the information, even if you are using Obsidian to store that password. Okay, the bright side of it is that the data in your computer is not encrypted because Obsidian will encrypt it when, when it's synchronized with the server and keep that package synchronized all the way up to the server and in rest at the server. But in your computer, it is open. So if you lose that password, you can simply copy uh, your vault to another place and start over, okay? But if you lose access to your computer, then that's gone. <laughs> There's no way to access that information. And to use this, all you have to do is pay for Obsidian Sync and use Obsidian Sync. There is a setting. It's not complicated at all. You just switch it and it will ask for a password. You type the password and you decide if you want Obsidian to take care of the password or you will take care of the password and that's it. If you add another device to the mix, 
Obsidian will ask you if you want to use uh, which vault you want to use. All you have to do is choose the vault you have at their servers and add your password, and that will synchronize that vault with your uh, device. Now, again, I'm not a specialist, but Obsidian doesn't have a web client, and I'm not sure if this end-to-end -end encryption is something that makes that hard or not. If you are an specialist, I would like to understand if this is something that can prevent Obsidian to have a, a, a web app in the future. But this is a way to keep your data really, really private and protected. I'm not sure how strong they, they explain down here which are the the keys and uh, uh, the system and the algorithm and everything they use so i i, I, <laughs> I keep saying this but <laughs> it's a big disclaimer i don't understand all this technicality here so i i can't tell you if this is the safest place to keep your data what i can tell you is once you use obsidian sync and encrypt your data Obsidian will not have access to it, will won't be able to see anything. Okay, let's take a look at Evernote's website to see the documentation about uh, encrypted information and how can you do something kind of similar to this on Evernote. Like the other services, there are many items here, many topics. But if we scroll down all the way down, oh, this is something interesting. If you are an Evernote user, uh, these are the emails and their domain names they use to communicate with the user. So it's it's good to know this because sometimes you get emails trying phishing emails trying to gain access to your account. So it's good to to know this. But let's go down here. So here we have transport encryption, which is the same. It's a different name for uh, in transit. And again, we have here encryption at rest and both have the technical explanation uh, below the, the, the items. And down here, we have this information. Uh, all of our node data resides inside the United States and they are using Google Cloud Platform. However, there's something that you can do to make this at least part of your nodes and to end encrypted. So let's take a look at that. So what Evernote has is this feature here, encrypt any text inside a note. And there are many technical explanations here. Again, all the links will be in the description below. And there's also a help page explaining how to encrypt this text inside a note. But you don't need to read this. I'll show you how to do it. But before that, there's one thing I almost forgot. There is a B-side video for supporters on Patreon and YouTube where I discuss what are my strategies. you find the links in the description below. Okay, uh, you can encrypt text on the Mac app, Windows app, and web client and decrypt open the encrypted text anywhere. You can open it on your Android, iPhone, iPad, but you can only create the encrypted files on a computer, either on a Mac or Windows apps or the web client. There are two ways to do it. If you select the text you want to encrypt and right-click it, you see this option here, encrypt selected text. This works on Windows and Mac. The other option is using a keyboard shortcut, Shift Command X on Mac or Control Shift X on Windows. And if you are using the web client on Windows or Mac, you have to use the keyboard shortcut. Okay, next we need to enter a password. Please use a strong password. I'm going to use one, two, three, four, five, six, because this is my tests account and I don't want to forget this password. Because if you forget this password, there is no way to recover it. Evernote doesn't see this password. No one has this password, only you. One, two, three, four, five, six. Don't use 
this password again. Let me stress this. This is just my test account. There's nothing here. It's just for the videos. And that's why I'm using this very basic password. Here you can add a hint. Be very careful with this. And there's this interesting box here. Remember passphrase until I quit Evernote. If you check this box, all the encrypted text in all your notes will be visible while using Evernote and they will be encrypted when you close Evernote. I'm not gonna check it because I wanna show you uh, how to open and close and, and use the encrypted text, okay? So let's encrypt this text. Now, all you see is this box here, and it is the same password in every note. So if I am to create a, a new encrypted text here, new text, select it, right click, encrypt text, one, two, three, four, five, six, and encrypt. It's the same password. It doesn't matter where you create the text. It doesn't matter how many times you create it. It will always be the same password. And if I click here now, I have the option to reveal encrypted content or decrypt permanently. So let's try the first one. One, two, three, four, five, six, and reveal. And hold on, don't go. Just yet, there are the things that I want to show you and talk about here. So, as you can see, this one is also uh, still this one is still encrypted because I didn't check that box. So, if I want to see this one, I have to type the password. And if I go back to this one now, it's encrypted again because again I didn't check that box. You can add some uh, formatting to this box, this encrypted box. And the easiest way to know what you can use is by clicking inside the box and then clicking the insert menu. As you can see here, some items are not clickable. This is your hint. There is no way to encrypt them. So you can use all the other items that are clickable. You can, you can type it here, but there's not even a way to format it manually. If I try to create a bullet list, it's not creating a bullet list. But if I try to create a headings, it will work. Uh, H2, for example. So uh, a, a tag, if I try to create a, a task, it's not gonna work. So you can only add here the items that are clickable in this uh, insert menu. Yes, it's limited, but at least you have another layer of protection that is hidden from Evernote. And when I say hidden, I mean not only from people, but from the app itself. If you add something here, the search will not find it because this is kind of an invisible space inside your Evernote. So everything gets here, it's protected, and it's invisible to Evernote and to everyone uh, unless the person has the password. And talking about passwords, there's one more thing that I should share with you. Let's go to this other one here. Uh, there is no way to change the password as far as I know. The only option is to decrypt permanently all the little boxes that you have in Evernote and then create a new encryption and choose another password. Now, how do you find all the encrypted notes? <laughs> There's a, a tip for you here. Make sure you are at the notes list, then go to the filter, contains, start typing, encrypted. And here, they are our two nodes with encrypted text. This is it for this one. If it was helpful, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And remember, if you are a supporter, there's a little extra content for you in the description below. Thanks for watching. See you soon.